What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Dr. Koja, your Hollywood mental health expert, and I'm gonna be answering a very common question again. There's a lot of these common questions, so we'll start off with those as I do these daily videos. And this video is coming from a nursing student. It can be applied to anybody in general, but a nursing student who has RDHD, so ADHD and autism. But she was asking about how to make it in life when you have ADHD and autism. And she mentioned a couple of things about depression and um, OCD, I want to say. So it might not be just pure ADHD and autism because you can throw the depression in and uh, you know OCD and the other conditions but for the purposes of this video I'm gonna make it a bit more broad so that way multiple people can extract some type of value out of this video so how do you maintain in life when you have ADHD and autism so maintaining is one thing it's good to maintain right it's good to be able to keep your head above water but that's not what we're aiming for not around here no ma'am no ham no turkey not in my community. We aim to thrive. We want to thrive in life, not just survive. We want to thrive in life. And it is possible to thrive uh, when you have RDHD, right? ADHD and autism. But you have to understand how those conditions impact you. So if you're watching this video right now and you have ADHD and you're also autistic, but you might be watching the video, this video right now, with four other people who have the same diagnoses as you, but your lives could be completely different. And ADHD, there's different types of ADHD, right? Inattentive, hyperactive, slash impulsive, combined type, autism, there's different levels, level one, two, three, you know, level one, you know, not needing so much support, but you do need some support. You have a couple of social struggles when it comes to communication, things of that nature, and level three, uh, you'll need considerable support. I may not be able to live life independently. There's a spectrum on both ends, and I'm not sure why my, uh, <laughs> My phone keeps going off. Uh, nobody wants to text me when I'm free, but when I'm making a video on YouTube, that's when everybody wants to text me. I'm sure I'll get a couple more texts here in a second. But even though I have ADHD, I know how to stay locked in. So ADHD and autism, even though we refer to autism as being on the spectrum, you can also kind of say the same thing about ADHD because no two ADHDers are alike. It's a very interesting diagnosis. Uh, and even for me, the person that I am today uh, and my struggles are different from my struggles five years ago and the whole time I've had ADHD is not going anywhere ADHD is not going anywhere you don't grow out of it same autism is gonna be there so you have to understand how these conditions impact and affect you so let's start off with the autism part first let's break this down systematically one by one we're gonna put these pieces together we're gonna make this puzzle come together and it's gonna make sense to you by the end of this video let's hit the autism part right so if you have ADHD and you're autistic the autism part how does autism affect you if you're watching this video and you want to know how to thrive with ADHD and autism start with autism how does it affect you socially how does autism affect you do you have to mask a lot do you have to ask a lot of people for support have you found ways to cope with the things that you struggle with if you have a hard time communicating your needs, do you have other ways of alerting people that you need help? A lot of the autistic kids that I work with are nonverbal, so they're not able to say that I have to use the restroom. They're not able to say, oh, I need to take a shower, I wanna eat. But they may be able to point. They might be able to you know, do a gesture, or maybe it's a certain type of vocal stimming that they do right when they're about to either get upset or right when they're about to use the restroom on themselves. So we know that and we can pick up on that by pattern recognition. We can kick it to high gear and help them out, right? So with the autism part, how much help do you need? What are the things that you struggle with? You have to ask yourself and be very honest. What are the things that you struggle with? What are the things that you are embarrassed about? And how can you compensate for those things? And if you don't have people in your life who could help you out with those things, what is the best that you can do on your own that can help to get you from Monday to Tuesday, Tuesday to Wednesday, and back around to Monday again for the next week? Sometimes we don't have all the help that we need. And in a perfect world, we would have that help. We would be able to grab the help from here and there, but it ain't a perfect world. So we have to do the best that we can. How much help do you need? And sometimes you may not know the help that you need. And that's an answer too. It just means that we have to do a bit more exploring. We have to figure out how to put the pieces together. So on the autism part, you have to understand that when you're autistic, you see the world differently from even a person with ADHD. Assuming you're just autistic and then 
somebody here has ADHD. There's a good chance that you can see the world differently. So once you understand how this condition affects your life, then you'll be able to better prepare for the things that you have to do. If you're a musician and let's say you are late diagnosed, you're autistic, you found out when you were 31, right? And you're a musician and you have to go on the road and you have to do all these shows, you're gonna have to be around a lot of people. So you have to ask yourself, all right, do I, <laughs> Do I legitimately have the social battery to hang in there and to do all this? Or can I skip this? Do, do I have to do press? Do I have to do X, Y, and Z, right? So a lot of things depend on your occupation, where you are at this current moment and where you're trying to get to. So the first thing, figure out how autism affects you in your life. And the second piece, do the same with ADHD. How does this condition, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, I don't like that name. We should have a better name for ADHD, but that's besides the point. I gotta I got stay on topic here. But figure out how, how ADHD affects you. Are you late to a lot of places? Do you interrupt people? Do you talk over people? Uh, do you have a hard time managing your finances? Do you have a hard time having a routine? And if you have ADHD and autism, maybe you hate routine, but you have to have a routine and you do better when you have one. So there's a lot of different dynamics that go into play here, but it all comes back around to how well do you understand yourself? How well do you understand yourself? Because once you know exactly what you're up against and what you have internally, then it's gonna highlight, we'll be able to clearly see the parts that we need to bring in and how we can get that supplemental help, right? So I show up to a lot of places late, so I might throw off the, you know, adjust the um, my, uh, my time on my watch, can't really do it on the cell phone, but in the car, I'll have it to be like 90 minutes ahead. So that way I have that sense of urgency, that artificial sense of urgency is very helpful for some of us with ADHD. Uh, and then also with ADHD, time blindness, do you struggle to manage your time? If you struggle to manage your time, okay. Maybe if you have a couple of buddies who live in the neighborhood, can they come over? You know, let's do some body doubling. Let's be productive together. Let's hold each other accountable. Things like that. So the, for the person who asked me this question, being a nursing student, I think she finished her RN. I'm not sure how far she got. But let's say your RN and you want to go back for your psych nurse practitioner degree. I think she mentioned something along the lines of, okay, all right, in order to get this degree, how many years do I have to be in school? Is it a two-year program? Is it a three-year program? Am I gonna stay in school for an extra year and get my doctorate? What's, what am I gonna do? And if so, I have to know exactly where I am. Where do I stand today? What am I facing? Do I have what it takes to get to that next level? And sometimes when you do an honest assessment of yourself, you look around and you're like, ah, oh, I actually don't have the facilities to, to do this thing. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means that, okay, I have to go to school four times a week uh, to get certain things done. And because I have to go to school four times a week, I need a car. I don't have a car right now. So I need to rely on X, Y, and Z. Now, not having a car is a significant barrier to a lot of things, but if you live in New York City, you might not need a car, right? We live in New York City, so we just use a subway. We can go to school. It's not a barrier to what we want to accomplish. So a lot of this stuff is individualized. You have to figure out first, how does ADHD and how does autism, how do these conditions affect your life? And where do you stand today? And what help do you need? How close are you to getting that help? And sometimes the help can come in many different ways. It might be like an online friend, like Dr. Kojo. It could be somebody else who posts similar content, or it could be somebody else who has your similar struggles and they know how helpful it is to have a friend around. So just because of that, they go extra hard for you. So when it's your time to reciprocate that, you go extra hard for them. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, and then of course, with ADHD and autism, how often do you see people who have just those two conditions? At least for me as a clinician, not that often. A lot of times you see a lot of anxiety, a lot of trauma, you know, sprinkle some trauma in there, a lot of depression. 70% of people with ADHD go on to develop depression. So, and also the neurodivergent experience growing up is just very traumatic at times. Uh, so the likelihood of having you know, PTSD is there or CPTSD. You know, repeated exposures to trauma. So it's never really just, it might be, but a lot of times it's not really just ADHD and autism, but it's those two combined with everything else. Maybe we might have bipolar in there, maybe a personality disorder or two, and that's fine. But if you have some of these extra comorbidities, as we call it, or these extra conditions, mental health conditions that you're diagnosed with, don't feel like, you no, know, you're finished. No, there's still hope. 
just that you have these three, four conditions that better explain the majority of the symptoms that you experience on a daily basis. But now, now that we know that, we can account for it. We can put together a game plan and we're gonna be prepared. We don't have to be Allen Iverson. We may have to practice. We may have to practice. We may have to put a couple of extra steps in place uh, to make sure that we can succeed when it's time to play the game. And the game is our actual life. So when you're neurodivergent, you know, life is gonna be a bit more interesting because we have to maneuver in. It's kind of like playing chess, but I don't want you to ever feel like you're a victim. You're not a victim. You can do what you wanna do, you know, within reason. Now, disabilities and I understand all that, but if you put your mind to something and you're able to get necessary help, you'll be surprised what you'll be able to do. Uh, and I don't want anybody in my community to think that because of their mental health condition or because of extenuating circumstances, they just cannot be the best version of themselves. Don't worry about anybody else. Let's just worry about what we have here. How can we be the best version of ourselves day in and day out? Sometimes that might be one of those days where you stay in bed and you wake up at 1 p.m. Maybe depression will let you get out of bed before noon. It's all good. We did the best that we could. We did the best that we could. Maybe you were burnt out. Maybe you had autistic burnout. Maybe you were tired. Maybe you stayed up too late the night before. It's all good. We cannot beat ourselves up. We have to be kind to ourselves. We've got to be our own biggest cheerleaders. Almost like you're rooting for a kid. You know, or even for like a dog, like when, when you're praising a dog. Yeah, good dog. I got an uh, Australian Shepherd named Zoe. She goes outside and she pees, you know, without running around for 10 minutes. I'm like, good Zoe, good Zoe, good Zoe. Same thing I would tell my nephews and nieces. Good job, RJ. So sometimes I tell myself that. I say, good job, Kojo. We woke up. We hit the gym. We play guitar. My guitar teacher told me, he said, Kojo, you can be a really good guitar player if you just played every single day a little bit. And this ADHD makes it hard for me to be consistent with the guitar, but I can play a couple of chords, you know. I'm not gonna get distracted, but and, and I got I got more than that. I got a lot more in the tank. But a little bit of practice every single day. There's no excuse. If I can't get to it, it's all good. I'll forgive myself. The past, the past. We'll focus on the present moment at hand. We'll take care of the future as it comes. So hopefully this video is helpful. I really hope that uh, if you're watching and you have ADHD and or autism uh, and we're looking for some type of support, that this video, you know, hopefully you got a couple of gems and jewels out of it. Uh, and I'll continue to post these videos on a daily basis, 10 o'clock on the East Coast, 7 o'clock a.m. Uh, California time. Uh, and I will be posting my uh, YouTube shorts as well. So I'm gonna be hitting you all at every different angle with a lot of this content. So I appreciate your attention. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. You know, what us YouTubers have to say at the end of the video. But uh, my name is Kodo Sarfo. And if you forget sometimes, it's good to remember and remind yourself that a lot of people care about you and I'm one of them. Take care.